tried with all my might, but I just can't win the fight, I'm slowly drifting, back along, and just when I ran out of the road, I met a man I didn't know, and he told me Got no choice but to believe my doubts are burning like ashes in the wind. So, so long to my old friends, to burden bitterness. You can just keep it moving, and I will. another one I am free I am free I am free hell lost another one and I am free I am free I am free hell lost another one solid ground. I think the master, I think the savior, you healed my heart and changed my
welcome to Libertyville Covenant Church. Uh, whether you are joining us in person or whether you are online, uh, we thank you for coming uh, and joining us uh, in this place where we can meet with Jesus Christ. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Kevin Nickel. Pastor Paul has asked me to help lead the first part of the service here. Um, and the tech team has mentioned that I should move left and right some to warm it up for Pastor Paul's sermon here. Uh, make sure that the camera is, uh, is right on. I uh, ask that you would uh, join me in our call to worship. Ride on, ride on in majesty. Hark, all the tribes, Hosanna cry. O Savior meek, who sue thy road with palms and scattered garments strewed. People of God, raise your voices, that our Redeemer King might be glorified among and with us, today and always. I ask that you would remain standing as the, uh, for our songs of praise. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna!
prayer. God of grace, your word is like a song. It is the melody that we long to sing. The refrain that we pray will get stuck in our heads. So as we return to scripture once more, we pray that you would allow us to sink into this song. Allow us to hear the truth between the words. Allow the cries of the crowd's hosannas to feel like our own. With open hearts and open ears, we pray. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. May the peace of Christ fill you this day. Christ is the source of our joy and gladness. May the peace of Christ be with you. Please greet your neighbors. My first scripture reading this morning is from Psalm 118, verses 25 through 29. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine upon us. With bows in hand, join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Our second scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 12 through 16. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his di disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him, and that these things had been done to him. This is the word of the Lord.
Thank you, choir. We have much to celebrate in prayer this week. I see off to my right, the Bethancourt seem well rested after a big celebration. I was hoping it would be a week-long celebration of such. Caitlin Bethancourt was married last Saturday to Andy Kong, and we celebrate along with you and celebrate that. What a great gift it is to celebrate with one another on such wonderful events. Uh, we celebrate along with you this morning. Uh, as you can see, printed in your bulletins, just on the inside in the Remember and Prayer section, uh, Jim and Debbie Thomas are just so grateful for the, the warm reception we had hosted for them last uh, Sunday uh, as a way of celebrating and, and preparing to send her off into the chapter ahead. And the mutual, you'll see the Thanksgiving for Arlene has shared in our love and a heartfelt thanks that's shared with us. I think we just thank God for giving us a chance to just share the love of Christ, and we invite you to continue to do so. I do bring um, an update. Uh, I just learned last night, um, many of you know, uh, Car- uh, pardon me, uh, Lauren Lindholm, longtime member of this church, uh, that san- sung in this choir, beloved here, His daughter, Kari Johnson, unfortunately, after a couple of different procedures surrounding cancer, um, has been sent home to be in the care of hospice. And so uh, Dr. Tim Johnson, that we called affectionately Yak, because he's tall and broad and strong, he will need us to surround them with our love. And we invite you to pray with and for Kari Johnson and the extended family. As you can see, there are printed requests surrounding health concerns for Janice Carlson and George Bernetti, for Bruce Thorson, Pastor Dave Johnson, for the Collins family. We continue to pray with and for Sue's mother in law, Sue Wei Sue, and continue to pray with Heather Larson and the extended family for her mother, Jan Peterson. I'd like to invite you all to pray with and for me, and as you bring your prayers before God, that God answers those prayers. God of transformation, we are reminded this day that Jesus' ride into Jerusalem was more than a show, more than a simple provocation, more than than a beginning of a cute celebration was a signal that things are changing, an unmistakably potent message to the powers that be, that the world as we know is is becoming the world as it should be. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness, this act of affiance directed to those in the day But sadly, Lord, we are mindful of today those that wield power through violence, oppression, tyranny. It's no less radical, no less tame. And for those who do the same today, God, we pray for the war-torn world that we are living in today, Lord, that we do not know peace. Lord, we so deeply need you to come. May our shouts of Hosanna be to save us from so much that reminds us of our vulnerabilities and brokenness. Lord, help us to be instruments of peace where there is so much chaos. Lord, help us to remember that you have released the captives, that you have set folks free. Lord, will you free us of our own bondage, our own addictions, our own apathy to the day. Lord, help us to be able to care for the poor, for those that are hungry, for those that are seeking shelter. Lord, won't you come quickly to end the divisions that divide so many. Lord, we thank you for the many ways that you have brought healing and wholeness, comfort and consolation and hope. And yet as we name the list is still long. Now 
Not everyone is healed of these wounds, Lord. We pray for your healing balm to be transforming us and renewing us and saving us. Lord, we are mindful that you are this gentle yet bold king. Won't your love be incarnate through your church to transform lives that we might live that in our context? Come, gracious God, into a world that longs change, a world that needs your love, a world full of our own children, a world ripe with hope and potential. Lord, as the psalmist reminded us, blessed are those who come in your name, O God. We invite you to come into our lives and into our homes that we might celebrate with Caitlin and Andy and the many ways we have to celebrate. Mindful of our daily bread is from you. The next breath we take is from you. The gifts of life, even our worship today is a gift. And Lord, we bring our voices together and we pray for your coming kingdom to emerge all around us using the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. May we stand together in singing, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. Let us do so together. I would love to invite our children to come forward. And if you feel like you're a big kid and you'd like to come forward, I'd love to have you. But there's a table over here waiting with a question. What's that? I don't know what that meant. You're waiting for three people? 
All right. Okay. So uh, I got to ask a question, kids. Um, have you ever been to a pool? Um, there are people there that are to save people, and they have a name or a lifeguard. Right. And what are they, what are they supposed to do uh, practically when you're there? Keep you safe? But what are they saving you from? Save you from drowning? Save you from the water? You might hypothetically children. Give me a second. Take off the case. Here you go, Angela. Kevin, will you report to my office after the service? <laughs> I'm not going to be able to get my 10,000 steps in. So the, in the parade, the people were yelling, save us. Were they in the pool? Why were they yelling that? What were they needing to be saved from? Sin. Hmm. What would you like to be saved from? Your brothers? <laughs> well, you were supposed to say all the other things before sin, Genevieve. We'll work on that for next week. Save us from broccoli. Save us from hard work. Save us. Okay, and maybe there's one person in here that likes broccoli. Uh, maybe two. As we see in our text today, they are shouting, Hosanna, save us. Can I ask you, what is it that you want to be saved from? Jesus is walking by. Jesus, I'd like a word with you. Save us. Save us from what? I think these are questions to say sometimes with perspective, why are they yelling that of all the things they could have yelled, hey, keep up the good work, or I like what you did with Lazarus the other day. Hey, how about some more fishes and loaves? I had some ideas. Jesus, you want to make chocolate or a Snickers bar? I mean, but let me bring us back to Join me in your mental time machine as we dial it back for a minute. Going back a couple thousand years to time and date to the experience where Jesus is just at the beginning of Holy Week. Be assured in your time machine we will return back to modern day by the end of the service. In our reading, as you can imagine the context, it's close to the festival, the Passover festival. So in this town of Jerusalem, there's roughly a population of 50,000. Now, in any population, in any part of the world, when you say, hey, we're going to double that, I'd imagine in any context that has to create tension, that has to create, there isn't enough places to stay. There's not enough places to facilitate this. Modern day, we talk about infrastructure and where will everyone go and at a Cubs game or the Bears game, this will be awful. There will be no parking. And then these people are going to want to eat at night in our neighborhoods. So here, imagine now the context is people have come from Galilee and all over filling the hillsides. But what have they come in the context of? If we were to read a little bit on the, the front side or the back side of this text, 
Sometimes past, uh, Palm Sunday feels like a mini Easter, but I'm going to set a context that it's full of tension. And I would say in some of the shouts of Hosanna might be trauma filled. In our reading, you didn't have everybody thrilled that Jesus had come to town. The crowd hears that Jesus is coming on the heels of having healed Lazarus is now in Bethany and then Bethpage. And folks are stepping up for a fight. The chief priests and Pharisees had given orders that anyone that knew where Jesus was should let them know so they might arrest him. Not the warmest of receptions. We know that the chief priests and the Pharisees had already decided not to just kill Jesus because of Jesus' drawing crowds. They had it out for Lazarus. What were they so upset about? This man was dead, not just a little dead, but super dead. And now he's back, and the response is to kill him again. So the word had gotten out, and the things that so upset them is the words that are used is, the whole world is starting to follow this man. Now, the context for that is the whole world, the unbelieving, the disbelieving, anyone that does not believe in who Christ is, is now following him. Some might say, this is wonderful, this is great, God in their midst, and they're responding to following him. However, this is a threat to the context of the day. So what now? Jesus, by the way, did not get a planning committee for this parade. He didn't say, line the streets and bring your palm branches, nor did he ask to throw your garments on the ground. If we were to turn to Gary Burge, a theologian, gives us some insight that as the crowds are coming, it was based on rumor that of Jesus in Judea, it's stirring the population and stirring up what might be, I want a glimpse of who this Jesus is. I want to name that this is such an important account. Interestingly, John places this in the middle of his gospel, not at the end, like Jesus is going to die next week. But in the middle, because so much is going to be taking place of significance, not only at the beginning of Holy Week here, but in Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. There's so much more to come, but the context of this matters. So as I mentioned, Jesus is climbing the east side of the Mountain of Olives from departing in Bethany, and he comes to Bethpage, where according to the Synoptic Gospels, you got to borrow a donkey. Some superhero this fella is, he doesn't have a herd of anything, but borrows a donkey. So while we have folks that are yelling, Hosanna, and here's the king of Israel, son of David, yelling these shouts of finally our ultimate king is here. Go let him have it in Jerusalem. What great disappointment does Jesus give them by selecting a donkey, a borrowed one? He's illustrating that I'm not like the heroes that you've looked for that are militant and have won victory through violence. The fact that he's not on a steed or having a steed pulling a chariot. What a deflating reality. Jesus on the beast of burden that's a donkey. Jesus, this isn't a good look for you. We are far high brow than that, dude. We don't rent anything we own. And you're not looking good. This isn't a good look for us. He says, here I am, and I've come to you gently. Already presenting what is this king in your midst. I think if we're honest with ourselves, we have unwritten expectations of our own. Who is the person or what is the God of your own design? What does that person look like? What does that saving look like? Are you screaming in shouts of Jewish nationalism? Like some were yelling, the Hosanna was, go and overthrow the Romans. 
because we're tired of the oppression. Finally be our political leader that's going to take it to them. And if you call us to arms, we're ready. And when he does, then to be so upset. Jesus, take it to the oppressors that I'm so poor in the systems in which we're amidst. Will you save me from my own poverty? Jesus is going to sorely disappoint you. Read the beginning of this chapter. As Jesus names, the poor are always going to be among you, but I am not always going to be so. Jesus, you're saying things that I don't like, I don't care for. This isn't my custom design. Jesus, I think if we're not careful, we might be doing some of the same things. That's the trouble in the text. Hang with me all the way to the end for the good news of the text, because this is a good news gospel. Let me give you the punchline. Jesus is going to win this one. Now, that's a different text than that. Jesus will always win victory. So on these hillsides, one can only imagine, as I've mentioned, the tensions. They're yelling things. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, coming gently in here. Folks are parading along, have come to cheer him on. Now, if you remember Pastor Steve's sermon from two weeks ago, Peter looks almost entirely like what, what I would have done with Jesus. When Jesus says, I'm going to go suffer, I'm going to be rejected, I'm going to be beaten, and then put on a cross. I would have said, Jesus, let's just talk for a minute. That's not happening this week. We're not going that way. The rejection is to say, you're not of what God's will is. You're about your will right now. And so get behind me, Peter. Can it be okay to be confused or miss the mark? Jesus, I wouldn't want this to happen to you if I'm honest. I wish you wouldn't have to do this. Please don't go through with that. There certainly can be a different way forward. And then in the following week, just last week, Peter again and others asking the question about forgiveness. Now, what kind of Messiah are you going to be? How many times do I have to forgive? Hoping maybe two, three, in my case, once. Unless it's me, I want him to forgive over and over and over again. We're seeing this Messiah that flips the apple cart and flips the idea of, I may not be who you thought I was. I might be better than your expectations, but I hope you can see that. Just yesterday, someone I was with, they'll go unnamed. Well, her name was Rachel. I came around delivering some goodies to the group that we were there. She says, "Um, no, not that pastry. I would like something else. I think when ordering food, when, when choosing a lot of things in life, no, I, I don't particularly care for that version, Jesus. It's a little too spicy, Jesus. I come from a home where ketchup was about as spicy as it got. Jesus, I'd like you to turn it down a little bit. I don't like this aggressive tone you're taking. Matter of fact, I don't like the way you're making me feel in riding into Jerusalem. I want to just name these pieces that sometimes the way we see God, we can see disappointment just based on preference. And I might be making you all very uncomfortable right now. Jesus has a way of comforting the afflicted and afflicting the comfortable. So let's get back to the text. Why did they grab palm branches and why were they throwing their garments? This was a sign of these branches that were waved as welcoming in such great, revered leaders, oftentimes the heroes of the day. You know what Messiah they had in mind in many cases? Ones that aren't dead. Ones that don't get killed. Ones that don't die on a cross and even seem defenseless. Yet the parade goes on to lay the branches in front, to lay the garment down in front. Now remember, Jesus didn't ask for that kind of reception Again, I don't know if you remember back in John chapter 6, Jesus would have had something like this happen again on the tail end of a wonderful miracle where fishes and loaves are made to feed thousands. 
And the crowd says, let's get him. We'll make him our king. Jesus has to slip out of the crowd then as well. I haven't come to be the king of your design. I haven't come to be the person you maybe have imagined. I've come to be a different king. A king from Galilee. That place that's unsuspecting. That king that's here not just to save Israel, and not to just revere this chosen people, but the reach and breath is for those people from that place. Those that have been the other. Those that are not folks you'd maybe choose to be with. And yes, lovingly choosing you. I hope you are growing tired of war and violence and the countless stories of such. Jesus has said, I have come and I am coming. And even when Peter and others made Jesus well aware, please don't. Jesus has come to save us from our sins. As I was working with Titus last week, as the building block says, sin is that which is displeasing in thought, word, and deed that breaks God's heart and separates him from us from him. These things that knowingly break relationships, knowingly make it difficult for us to hear God's voice and follow it, and Sin is that divide, that wedge that separates us from God. I've come to save you from your sins. Do you want to be a part of that parade? Do you want to join me and get behind to say, hey, save me every day? And him and him and her and all these folks, we want everyone to be saved. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. It goes on to say, I haven't come to condemn it, but to save this world. As Jesus rides by you today, what would you like to tell him to save you from? Are you as confused as it says in the last verse? The disciples were thoroughly confused. Jesus, this doesn't make sense. Your love to pay the debts for this world, that you're going to reconcile us one to another, this cavern of divide, that you want eternity with me, but your citizenship, your kingdom coming, looks so very different. No greater love than one that lays down their life for another. That's the kind of king we have. The one that washing the disciples' feet. Would you wash my feet? Would you let me wash your feet? Would you allow God to wash you clean from sin? I would love for you to leave today knowing that whatever you're going through, Jesus sees that. Because I'm riding in for her. And for him, I know it's going to hurt. I know what I'm doing. And even when faced with the Pharisees, the folks that wanted to kill him, they carried around stones ready to let him have it. In the world, it was eye for an eye. Jesus rides in for you. He loves you so deeply that he gives up his life for you and me. Our Savior lives. That's the story. We got on to Easter. We'll back up to Palm Sunday. Jesus rides in to face the chaos on your behalf. And the invitation is just keep following him and keep telling that story. And for folks that kind of get it mixed up and I get it mixed up, will you remind me of the story? When I turn myself against you or you against me, we're reminded like Jesus is both of our saviors. He invites us to the table. He died on the cross for all of you and me. And the envision is to say we're going to spend eternity together. So that's our story. That's our Messiah. That's our shouts of Hosanna. Are we that radical? I'll close in naming this.
that as Jesus saw the shouts and the confusion, the same people are saying, save us. Five days later, on Friday evening, were the same people yelling, crucify him. And yet Jesus was willing to lay down his life. Forgive them, they know not what they do. The hope is this, and all this again. As the little song says, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. The little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. We talked about songs we sing and the theology therein. I hope these songs of faith are sung in you. Shouts of Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. I hope that's our prayer for the rest of the day and of the week. Jesus, save us, save us, save us. And who's your us? Is the us bigger than the person next to you? Save us. Jesus, won't you save us and be the Redeemer and Messiah to all? This is good news, my friend. Can I pray with you? Lord, we are mindful that we are disciples that don't understand. And maybe a little while longer, if we keep looking in, we'll be able to gaze more clearly upon you, to, to see you more clearly. The kings of today are sending their servants in to be slaughtered in wars and battles. And here you are as our king, laying down your life for us. Lord, we thank you that you have saved us in your life and in your death and your resurrection. Let the shouts of Hosanna ring out and ring true, loud enough for all to hear. Lord, won't you continue to save us? God, we love you and the gift of your son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Let us stand together where we sing the, the hymn, I will sing the wondrous story, verses 1, 2, and 4. Won't you stand with me now?
For those that are here today with a gift offering, a tithe and offering, there's a basket in the middle aisle on your way out. You're welcome to place your offering there as an act of worship. For those that are online, there's the internet to access giving online at our website, www.libcov.org. Uh, feel free to give as God so leads in response to the good news of Jesus. We thank you for your faithful giving. And I believe our trustees still invite us to continue in our faithful giving as it continues to bring life to what we are doing here to further the reach and breadth of God's will. With that in mind, um, I want to invite you to a couple ways to respond. But as Maggie Johnson reminded me just uh, before worship, you have been responding. And this week, we were able to deliver some of the response of your giving of cleaning supplies and food and nourishment and the like. Where we learned when arriving in Waukegan now, there's folks that are, are seeking housing and shelter and food there. People are coming typically between a month and six months and come through the process of finding shelter and food and something to eat while then being equipped to find jobs and opportunity to then move out of these hotels and into homes that they can call their own. I thank you that we packed the van to the gills to the point where we could only fit some of our students in there, um, but we packed it full. To my surprise, as we arrived, have you ever asked, like, who cares? Does this matter? The moment our van pulls around and doors open, there's doors all around this place that are starting to peer out and see what's happening. Two folks that work for PADS came out and were delighted to see all that we had to bring and equally as excited to see our young people that came. Uh, Maggie Johnson named that uh, Chris Heinzelman and herself and Donna Clark and a few others did a fabulous job of getting things prepared. Thank you so much for doing that. Uh, you prepared uh, our young people to also serve well, um, intergenerationally to see that done well. I just want to thank you for just being faithful. The bag that they got will last one week, and they get one. One bag until the next supplies come, if they come. They're praying and waiting for us to deliver them. And even the location that we dropped it off said, well, maybe we have to bring half of this somewhere else. To another location with need. So thank you for your giving. If you'd like to be more part of that giving, please connect with Maggie Johnson to do so. But thank you again, Maggie, for leading that charge. Uh, you'll see in your bulletins, um, Holy Week is printed inside. Pastor Steve, who is in Baltimore for the weekend, visiting with Sarah, will be returning to help lead us in the worship for the week. We aren't just having a mixed worship service, but we're having Redeemer life's worship team leading the music for good friday pastor ej from new abbey covenant church will be leading from up front will leading communion and pastor steve and pastor karen Hines and i will be contributing as well we hope as an act of coming together as the church during holy week that you will come and be part of a wonderful worship service not only good friday as you see it's at seven o'clock but also the easter egg hunt um, that starts at two and Easter morning at 10.30. You'll see on the, the last announcement, on the very back, uh, if you are looking for an Easter lily in the honor and memory of someone, or maybe you might like an Easter lily, or an Easter lily you might like to give away as well, feel free to sign that, uh, fill that out, and drop it into the offering plate in the back as well, or on Debbie's office as well. With that said, there's much a glow in the life of our church this week, I'd like to point you to not only the newsletter that came out this week, but also our calendar for such. With all that said, um, I want to invite you now to stand with me as we sing the doxology together. Let us do so.
invite you to lift up your heads and gaze upon the cross to hear these words of benediction and charge. Beloved wanderer, as you leave this place, may you carry your curious heart on your sleeve. May you look for God in every face. May you find the courage to get out of the boat, to run to the tomb, and to speak of your faith. And when the world falls apart, may you hear God's voice deep within saying, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. You are called, you are blessed, in both your ups and your downs. You always belong to God. Go now in peace. Go trusting that good news now and always. Amen. Amen. Amen.